The thought revolution is about to begin. You boys better buckle up, baby. You know, like high school, college, whatever, you always do icebreakers. Like, what's your favorite hobby? What's your favorite this? I always have three things. I have an anaconda slung around my waist. Cap. My parents never loved me. Yeah. And I love boys. I am having a very bad day. I am in no more dunking on ethos. Only fans. Okay, listen. I'm in between a bunch of flights right now. I had to get a banger out for you boys. I don't have any pre-recorded content, but I want to make sure it's still a banger. And I knew I had to make a video on this. Everybody knows OnlyFans. I don't have to give you a rundown of what OnlyFans is. But recently, it was all over the news that OnlyFans is banning explicit content. Huh? Bruh. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. That's like Twitter banning tweets. That's like YouTube banning videos. That's like The Hub banning sex. It's like if you go in Chick-fil-A, they're like, hey, I'm so sorry, we banned chicken in all restaurants. There has to be an explanation for this. I know ethos are just fuming. And listen, I'm not gonna name drop. One of my good friends was talking to an OnlyFans thought. Stupid. I call her thought because she cheated on him. Shocker, buddy. Ooh, that's kind of what I told him. Either way, I feel personally involved in this case now. So I'm excited. I just typed OnlyFans ban right into Google here. OnlyFans founder blames banks for the ban. Let's go right here. Let's see what CNN business says to say. Why did OnlyFans ban sexually explicit content? It says it's the credit card companies. Thursday's decision by the creator platform OnlyFans to soon stop hosting a wide swath of sexually explicit content is sending shockwaves through the internet. OnlyFans, a website with 130 million users. That is embarrassing. And more than two million. So you're telling me 128 million of those people are not the content creators, bro? I'm so mad at you guys. I'm kidding. I have five different accounts. So OnlyFans has become synonymous with pornography. For many, performing on the app is a lifeline. Some who lost their job. Okay, I'm not. I'm not here to do a pity party for the ethos. Okay, I'm here to dunk on them. Let's skip all that. Not all of OnlyFans' explicit content is going away. Simple nudity will still be allowed. Okay, all you simp's can rejoice. That still exists. As long as it complies with the platform's other policies, only content containing sex explicit conduct, sex acts on camera will be banned, it said in a statement. Okay, so that makes sense. I am confused on how this happened though. Venture capital firms are often wary of investing in platforms that host adult content. According to internal documents obtained by Axios, OnlyFans popularity and revenue both exploded during the pandemic, yet it has struggled to secure outside investment. Ooh, wait a second, so OnlyFans is selling out. You know what, I respect it, baby. Secure that bag, OnlyFans. OnlyFans literally dunk on their own creators to sell out. Do you guys feel like that when I promote Raid Shadow Legends, one of the greatest mobile RPGs of all time? Let's play Raid Shadow Legends. Start now. <laughs> Is that how you feel? Do you feel dunked on? Here's the difference though, is these girls are like, this is their livelihood. They're making an absurd amount of money. And they were just like, nah, chief, I want that venture capital firm to come in and hand me a bag slammed on down the lane poster. I don't do that to you guys. I mean, you can still skip the ad. You can also download it using my link. Shut your fucking ass up. Bitch, shut the fuck up. It's funny that it got booming during the pandemic, bro. I'm not gonna lie, I do remember when the Hub did like a free week of Hub Premium. Me and all the boys were like, yo, let's rip. Oh, bro. So we had a big sleepover and we all, okay, I'm, so, I'm done. Hey, yo, what the fuck? OnlyFans' decision is also a result of a much wider and concerted crackdown in recent years across explicit parts of the internet. One driven largely by a group of powerful and increasingly assertive companies. The payment processors who, behind the scenes, handle every swipe of your credit card. Whether you're paying for gas, buying groceries, or yes, tipping a performer on OnlyFans. OnlyFans said its decision was driven with a view toward building a sustainable platform for the long term. These changes are to comply with the request of our banking partners and payout providers. Credit card companies are growing increasingly conscious of their own own potential legal exposure, McNamara added, if they are accused of facilitating sex trafficking or the spread of child sexual abuse material. This is the exact same thing I said about TikTok and they made a huge shift on banning people. I'm not saying my video played any factor in that, but TikTok did, I'd say roughly eight months later, have a massive crackdown. You can get banned like that on TikTok now, which it was needed a year ago. And that's a really good point because look, I get it. I get why you might want somebody's nudes. I was 16 once. I definitely might have shelled out a good amount of money for Megan Fox's nudes. But the problem is I probably would have used my mom's credit card for that, which is what I imagine a lot of people are doing here. I'd have been like, mom, I gotta get some football uniform or something. Megan Fox's nudes. 
And then, all of a sudden, my mom catches me with Megan Fox's news. She sees the charge on her credit card. Who does she complain to? She can't complain to the company I bought it from. It's not their fault. They're just taking the credit card information. My mom would then, in that scenario, call into Visa or Amex and say, hey, why are you letting my kid purchase pornography? Like, why are you allowing that? And that's why your credit card companies are cracking down on OnlyFans. I guess that makes sense. I mean, do you really want to be the credit card company for the guy who shelled out $175,000 for someone to send them a video? video of sucking on their own toes or something. Oh my gosh, do you guys remember that story I told you in a recent video about a small person? I want to say midget, but I can't because you have to say small person. That small person also happened to do Bruh. OnlyFans. This story is insane. There's a smoke show, Batty, 10 on 10, and she lives with this small person. And I've heard through the grapevine, they both do OnlyFans. Not anymore, really. Get shit on. But I've heard through the grapevine that the small person makes like triple, triple what the absolute Batty makes because of like basically like fetishes. It weirds me out so bad, if I can be totally honest with you. But like, that's the burden that falls on the credit card company. It's not OnlyFans' problem. That's what their platform is for, or I guess was for. Do you really want to be the guy at Amex who gets a call from a mom? It's like, why did my son just spend $50,000 on small person porn? I wouldn't want to be the guy on the other end of that call. Discover, MasterCard, and Visa all announced that they would suspend payments to Pornhub. Pornhub got dunked on too, damn. Following allegations that the site had hosted child sexual abuse material. Yeah, that's so true. Anybody could upload anything to Pornhub. How are you gonna like, how are you gonna age verify somebody? At least in the past. In response, Pornhub scripted its site of all videos that weren't produced by verified partners and implemented a verification program. Yeah, that's tough for the hub, dude, no lie. The angle that this article is taking is really interesting to me. Let's read this top sentence here. The new rules revealed the power of the payments industry to shape how millions of people experience the internet. Is that really the way you see it, CNN business? I mean, I guess you're right. They certainly are shaping how millions of people are experiencing the internet. The sentence isn't wrong, but the implication is that you don't like how much power the credit card companies have. It sounds like the credit card companies are trying to stop minors from having their videos circulated throughout the internet to pedophiles, which I think is a Pretty solid move on their part. The financial industry's muscle flexing has drawn criticism from digital rights advocates who argue it's throwing its weight around. Who's a digital rights advocate? Go outside, bro. Very well written article though. I'm really impressed right now. Now sex workers are raising their voices again, this time to defend their ability to represent themselves on digital platforms like OnlyFans. This I have the biggest issue with. I actually don't really care if someone's a sex worker and I don't have an opinion on that. I see they're making a shit ton of money, so good for them. They can secure themselves and their family for the rest of their future if they invest their money right. So I think it's a good idea. What I don't like is when people bitch so hard about a platform that they build their audience on. It's how I feel about all YouTubers making fun of YouTube all the time. Let me explain. So like this sentence here, several OnlyFans creators have told CNN Business they are frustrated and angry at OnlyFans announcement, adding that the decision will cost the creators their livelihoods and networks and could ultimately lead to a decline in OnlyFans own popularity as a platform. I don't disagree with the last sentence, but the rest of that is just Bullshit. The equivalent is you have built your house on someone else's land. That's what I always say with YouTube. If tomorrow YouTube is like, Matt, you've made so many inappropriate jokes that we're wiping your channel. Obviously I'd be pissed, but like, it's not like this is my website. YouTube pays me. I'm incredibly grateful to YouTube for giving me the platform that I can reach you guys. And in reciprocation, YouTube appreciates me and that's why they haven't taken my channel down. <laughs> The OnlyFans creators who are upset about this, you didn't get famous on your own. OnlyFans is famous as the conglomeration of horny motherfuckers who will pay you to do dumb shit. But it's not costing you your livelihood. You built your livelihood on someone else's platform. What they choose to do with their platform is their bidding. And if OnlyFans wants to sell out, take a gigantic bag from a venture capital firm, and you can't <laughs> give the Glock Glock 9,000 on OnlyFans anymore, that's their decision. I'm sorry, Ethots, but I just came down the lane, windmill, dunk on you, buddy. You know what? I'm telling you, this article is well written. He or she, whoever wrote this, said something very similar right here. Payment processors are well within their rights to determine what transactions they will and won't support on their networks. In that respect, they are not that different from platforms such as Facebook and Twitter, who are massively powerful in their own right. I mean, it makes sense. Facebook and Twitter just yeet shit all the time. And keep in mind, a lot of explicit content is still allowed on OnlyFans. You just can't literally have sex. Like, I'm sorry, you thought to take one day without getting piped. You're gonna have to. I'm sorry.
wants to see changes made to Section 230 that could expose platforms to more liability under certain circumstances. Perhaps, she said, those changes might even allow sex workers who feel their businesses have been harmed by payment processors to sue them for tortuous interference. We're talking about OnlyFans, where we're seeing sex workers do safe work. It's from their own homes. They're making content on their own terms. Okay, I know I'm cherry picking a little bit because that, that sentence has to be out of context since I can't see any more context than what's written here, but it's not about the sex workers. Anybody can do whatever they want in their own home. That's not what's in question here. It's whether you can post it to an online platform and somebody, anybody with a credit card can buy it. I mean, based on this sentence, if a minor wanted to have sex from their own home and it was safe, it would be okay. And then me, like an 80 year old pedophile could buy it. That's cherry picking a little bit, but it just really well written article here from CNN Business. Brian Fung. Brian. Props to Big Baller. OnlyFans founder blames banks for porn ban. Yeah, he's gotta be more pissed than anybody. He probably had unlimited access to everybody's everything. OnlyFans founder and chief executive Tim Stokely. He looks exactly like what I thought the founder of OnlyFans would look like. And I'm not even clowning him. That's just exactly what I picture the guy looking like. Tell me that guy doesn't look absurdly horny. The UK company has faced criticism for abandoning the adult performers who helped attract its roughly 130 million users, as well as skepticism as to whether it can prosper under new rules that ban sex acts. They'll permit nudity. I feel bad, bro. I don't necessarily feel bad that they banned it because I think it should have been banned, but they really waited until they got so famous and then banned it. It's like you knew what could have gone wrong two years ago, one year ago, whatever, but OnlyFans wasn't popping like this. Now it's popping and they're like, we might want to crack down on what just got us famous. You know what this kind of reminds me of, like in a very low-key sense, is Vine. I know some of you are closer to my age, and I know some of you are younger. Seems to be like a 50-50 split when I meet you guys in real life, but Vine was TikTok way before TikTok was TikTok. TikTok's a lot better, way more features, way easier to use, all that, but Vine was like the most popular app ever. Everybody was talking about Vine, and then within the span of two, three years, it just, I don't even know what happened. I don't know if they got bought out or just got deleted from the app store. I have no idea idea what happened, it was gone. And there was this massive void for like four or five years. Everybody wanted that short form content, that re-addicting shit, like what TikTok is. And then TikTok comes out, it blows up, this cycle repeats. If OnlyFans goes down in a burning fire for this, there's gonna be a gap until somebody comes in and there's gonna be a brand new OnlyFans. I'm telling you, bro. All right, that's it for today's video. I don't really know why I wanted to make this video so bad, but I do like making this style of content. I hope you guys enjoy it too. I know this isn't your regularly scheduled gaming content, but we'll get right back to it. Tomorrow's Wheel of 2K. After that, I got Madden 22 video and we'll figure it out from there. Plus MMG Live is coming up real soon. All right, I love you boys. Thank you for watching as always. I will see you in the next video. Peace out.